Good morning and welcome to our Chicago. I'm Liz Nagy. Tourism across the U.S. and here in the city is rebounding. According to reports, for the first six months of this year, occupied hotel rooms in Chicago were at 75% of 2019 levels. But more than two years after the start of the pandemic, the president and CEO of the Illinois Hotel and Lodging Association says business travel is still lagging here in Chicago. That's why leisure travel is key this summer. And there are thousands of those travelers in town this weekend for Lollapalooza. Joining me now is Michael Jacobson, president and CEO of the Illinois Hotel and Lodging Association. Michael, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Liz. Thanks for having me. All right, well, we're talking on the weekend of Lollapalooza, and last year an estimated 380,000 people attended the festival. So how important are events like Lollapalooza to Chicago hotels? So this is our biggest weekend of the year every year. Lollapalooza brings 400,000 visitors to the city, and it's just a, a critical weekend for our hotels, especially as, as you said, we rely on leisure tourism right now more than business travel while we wait for business travel to uh, still recover. So events like Lollapalooza not only do so much for our hotels, but really the broader economy. The, the, these attendees aren't just staying in the hotels and walking to Grand Park. They're eating in our restaurants, they're going to our museums, they're riding in our taxi cabs. So the ripple effect across the entire Chicago economy is incredible. And before we, we talk about some of those other business impacts and we're talking about hotel occupancy rates, what are the hotel occupancy rates in Chicago this weekend for this year's Lollapalooza? So most of our hotels were sold out. Um, there were still uh, some deals to be had, and I think a lot of people made some last minute reservations. That's really what we're seeing, not just during Lollapalooza weekend, but what we call the booking window, how late how, how late people book in the game. A lot of people are booking the day before or even the day of their arrival. So we did see a lot of that this weekend, um, and really our, our hotels just had an incredible weekend. We'll get the data a little later this week, um, but we're expecting to be in the high 80s, low 90% range for occupancy. And that's something that's much needed because because Michael, hotel occupancy rates are up, but they're still not quite where they were at a pre-pandemic level. So what is still keeping those numbers down? It's really that business travel piece. Again, leisure travelers, especially in the summer while everybody's out for the summer and away from school, uh, families had so much pent up demand that they're seizing the opportunity to take their vacation. But the individual business traveler is still lagging. Companies haven't put their uh, employees on the road as much as they did in 2019. We expect that to recover over the next year and a half or so, I think, especially as people get used to living with COVID more and we have treatments and we have vaccines. More and more companies are realizing we can't make a sales deal over Zoom, or you can't do an educational program over Zoom. Zoom did a great job filling a void during the pandemic, but really you gotta be there face to face and shake someone's hand if you're gonna be making a major business deal. So companies realize this and uh, we're confident that over the next year and a half, uh, business travel will really come storming back. Well, it, it sounds like we're dealing mostly with leisure travelers here while we're waiting for that business travel to rebound. But do you have any sense this weekend of what number of percentage of people staying in hotels in Chicago are tourists and what percentage are business travelers or people here for perhaps some other reason? This weekend will mostly be tour, uh, leisure tourists. Uh, again, especially over a weekend, that's always the case. Um, but because of Lollapalooza, we don't have a major convention in town this weekend. We will. Uh, we've had really great convention business over at McCormick Place, and uh, that will continue for the rest of this year and into next. Uh, but this weekend was mostly leisure tourists. And the other big component is international tourism. You're starting to see that really come storming back, especially after the federal government did away with the requirement to test before you came into the U.S. We saw bookings increase almost immediately when the government dropped that requirement. And, and on the back end of all of this, I know you said that staffing shortages, the number one issue for hotels right now, did many employees leave during the early days of the pandemic and just never return? And how are hotels working to sort of attract people back or attract new employees? Yeah, we're, we're having an incredible challenge with staffing. A lot of people did leave. We're not unique to that. It's not unique to hotels. A lot of industries are dealing with the same issue. One thing that we're doing is just trying to get the word out about what a career in a hotel means. A lot of people frequently just think of us as a dead end minimum wage job. But in the city of Chicago, the starting wage at most of our hotels is $23 an hour right now the starting wage. Um, and not only is that the starting wage, you get incredible benefits like healthcare and 401k, travel benefits anywhere around the world, even transit subsidies and in some cases, childcare subsidies. So the not only the benefits, but also the flexibility that we offer, we offer really great pathways to um, a middle-class career that you could start as a front desk agent or as a doorman and very quickly work your way up the ranks to a general manager, which is an incredible career and a very lucrative one at that.
Well, hopefully that will be able to help lure some employees back to the hotel industry. And last thing, looking ahead, uh, the Democratic National Convention was in town this past week to take a look around Chicago. And Chicago is competing to host the 2024 Democratic National Convention. So what would that mean for the hospitality industry in the city? It would be a game changer for us. We, we had a really great week. We showcased absolutely the best that Chicago has to offer uh, in partnership with the governor and the mayor and Senator Duckworth. We really rolled out the red carpet for the DNC this past week. And I think what they see is that not only do we have an incredible product in terms of how many hotels, how many union hotels we have in a core central business district that we won't have to bus people 60 minutes like some of these other competing cities would have to, um, but also what it would mean for our city. Uh, uh, similar to Lollapalooza, you can't underscore the importance that this has on the branding of the city. When we bring in so many visitors from not only around the country, but around the world, either attendees or media, and then you see the social media posts of bringing these visitors here, it would really help increase the brand of the city, which we all know is much needed right now. Okay, Michael Jacobson, president and CEO of the Illinois Hotel and Lodging Association. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us this morning. After a short break, we'll look at who's coming to the loop this summer and how that part of the city is still recovering from the pandemic. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.